when they announced that this was going to be a Halloween movie that ignored all the sequels, I was super happy. But then I watched them all last year, and now I'm a little bit iffy on it. Especially with ignoring Halloween 2 is that it eliminates all Sam Hain connections. And Halloween 2 isn't great, but it takes place immediately after the original, so how are they going to do that? How are they going to eventually address it? And they do in Halloween Kill, so we'll get there. And while this is a very tense and unsettling experience as a horror movie, I'm not sure how necessary it was or what it really adds to the franchise. There's some really unique ideas about Lori and the effect of PTSD and what it turns her into and how it affects her relationships, but it's glossed over really quickly, as is a lot of other things in this movie. And this is an effective horror movie like the original, especially in making the kills horrifying. The acting is nice and there's some genuine tension and there's a lot of interesting ideas, like with the journalist, the new doctor, the cop from 40 years ago, etc. but the film chooses to do very little with it. Everything is gone or glossed over pretty quickly, like I mentioned, and there's not much character depth other than Laurie, and even that's rushed through. Even the lore with Michael here being the psychology, is, which is fascinating, is just sort of half-heartedly mentioned. The other versions give reasons sort of as to how he is the way he is, but there's pretty much nothing here, which is trying to add the subtle like mystery to it and that it's better with the mystery to it. But because we have had so many films at this point, it doesn't feel fresh. There are thrills, jump scares, and genuine terror. The cinematography and visual style is decent, but it doesn't come close to the original, which I probably need to stop comparing to, but it's hard not to when this is titled the same thing. It's very modern looking and the editing is sharp. I love seeing Michael in the background like in the original, but they don't utilize that enough because the scares here are overall cheaper than the original. The film utilizes the art of jump scare tactics frequently, or loud cuts with overemphasized sound to establish the terror of what's happening. Not so much using the cinematic language of the camera visually, which constantly felt like the camera was the killer and made you wonder in any and every frame if Michael was watching in the original Halloween. But in this, I found myself more annoyed and not wanting a heart attack at the obvious jump scares more so than actually feeling invested in the horror of what was being portrayed instead of just anticipating the terribly mixed audio that was gonna come and having to constantly mess with the remote. I said what I said. These kinds of movies are disturbing to me, but I think that's the point. And it got it across well. But at the end of the day, and we'll find out more with how Wayne ends, when it ends, here, what's the point of this trilogy? What is it really adding to the franchise that they haven't explored before? And that's my biggest struggle with it. All films are cash grabs in some way, shape, or form, but this one feels like we needed more Michael Myers after so many different attempts and a bunch of different continuities. Let's make another one, but it's mostly entertaining and I enjoyed it. I give Halloween 2018 3.5 out of five stars. I really dislike this trend of remakes being named what the original thing was. Just call it something else. Just add something to it. It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Follow me on Letterboxd, check out some written reviews that I've done on viralhair.com, and subscribe. And remember, always look for the good.